Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the Rotopros.com Best DFS Show that just happens to come at you around 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. Welcome to another edition of the Champions League Breakdown for the Knockout Stages, second leg, March 12th and 13 main slates here. So, yeah, let's jump right in here. Uh, I think uh, today's an incredibly exciting slate. I'm incredibly excited for it, uh, so I don't want to waste too much time here and hopefully have have a really quick video for everyone to look at. So first game of the slate, we have Schalke making the trip from Germany into Manchester to play Man City. Second game, we have uh, Atletico Madrid making the trip from Spain into uh, Italy to play Juventus. Third game on the slate, we have uh, a Lyon making the trip from France into Spain to play Barcelona. And the final game of the slate, we have Liverpool making the trip into Germany to play Bayern Munich. So yeah, the first thing I want to touch on very quickly, this slate for me is a lot of different, uh, either teams are cash team or they're GPP team. So I'm generally not mixing or matching the players that I take from uh, a team to go into different formats. I think there are some players that do warrant multi-format play, but for the most part, I'm sticking very uh, one or the other. And the second thing I want to touch on very quickly here is that we're actually looking at a slate here that could be really definitive in world football where a lot of the biggest names are wiped out on uh, really two knockout stages uh, or one knockout stage except in two different legs uh, which would be quite unheard of in terms of the magnitude of this happening. When we consider last slate where we had uh, Real, Real Madrid and PSG both knocked out and Man City isn't home free yet. Juve's down to nothing. Liverpool are looking at an away game and uh, even Barcelona isn't looking at a sure thing here. So yeah, I, I think a lot of teams are favored and very very obvious uh, in terms of what they offer but in terms of scripts that we can chase there's some pretty exciting definitive crazy world football scripts that we could be looking at here which you know it's just always fun to think about as the games progress so yeah first game on the slate let's just jump right into this we have Schalke making the trip into Man City so like I said uh, Man City is up 3-2 here uh, after uh, giving up two penalty shot goals uh, very quickly in the first leg uh, only to come back and win it so a lot of that had to do with the fact that Schalke is one of Germany's worst top teams in the Bundesliga. They're sitting just above the relegation zone right now. They've lost five of their six previous games. However, they are scoring lots of goals, and they've scored in six of their pre they've scored in six of their seven Champions League games this season, and they've scored in seven of their previous eight away games in all competitions. Uh, you'll hear me talk a lot this slate about all competitions. Uh, what that basically means is that during basically uh, the last few games, teams have either had their domestic league, cup games, or also Champions League games. So all competitions means all their competitive games uh, are considered in uh, that statement. So yeah, uh, Schalke is a team that is going to score goals. And considering that City this season has generally looked like a side when they're facing teams that defend to have their way, but when teams come at them, they, they are vulnerable. They're very vulnerable as as they showed last slate. So where we can start this slate for, uh, for my takes in terms of Schalke, I'm going to be fading the goaltender, but I think they do have a co couple of plays in the back end. The first play I want to talk about is Ozipka at the only uh, 3.5K uh I think is an excellent cash or GPP play, honestly, is someone that you can multi-format here. I'd probably keep him to cash because I don't really see him having that much of a ceiling. But in the situation that he does catch something, he is a player from his salary range that will have a considerable amount of floor compared to everyone else in his range. So uh, I really don't mind Ozipka uh, for cash mainly, but if you want to shine to GPP, you can. Now, converse that to uh, Salif Sane is someone this slate that you're going to want for either format as much as you can, potentially even be your highest owned player this slate. Let's hope he starts. This is kind of a situation where for from time to time, Sane doesn't actually start for whatever reason. But when he does start from 2.9k, he's quite simply the best play of the slate. Uh, he's going to finish around 6 to 8 fantasy points as his floor. And from only 2.9k, you can take that in cash and you're absolutely smashing your salary range. Or you can take that in GPP and you're just getting by with a range that is accessible and is viable in GPP as long as everyone else uh, does what they're 
supposed to do now quite specifically here if you're taking someone that's 2.9k in gpp you should be taking either ronaldo or messi or ronaldo and messi or at least you know two massive real deal guys here that are going to get the job done for you and that's the main point of taking someone like sane you get your six fantasy points and you walk with your less than 3k salary and uh ideally for cash you want 2.5 uh times your salary so basically 3.3 k let's say just for math's sake and uh it, you'll you'll want just over six fantasy points for that and then for gpp you want around three to 3.5 uh so basically anything around eight to nine and you're flying in gpp to absolutely destroy and if you get six fantasy points with him in gpp you're still totally set uh you're you're totally fine but with that in cash, you're you're destroying people. Uh, you're setting up, I should say, to destroy people. So yeah, uh, get uh, Salif Sane into your cards this slate, uh, 2.9K. Now, in terms of the midfield, they're pretty beat up. And there's something else I want to touch on very quickly about uh, Schalke is that they look like they're going through a little bit of dressing room issues at the moment where uh, this week, uh, uh, Harit and uh, Mark Alth both uh, skipped practice. So they, uh, they've been suspended by the team and they won't be playing uh i should say last week that happened they were suspended on the weekend by the team and they they won't be playing again this slate uh so that opens up a lot of doors for a uh, true gpp value and in the midfield i'm looking at guys like uh weston mckinney uh if you are a north american watching this uh he he is from the u.s so if you're a narrative seeker and you just want someone for the hell of it uh, there's someone you can play weston mckinney 3.7k uh, i would definitely keep him to gpp though uh you can go someone like bentaleb uh three point or excuse me 4.5k he had both the penalty shot goals last slate against man city so we do know that he does take the penalty shots minutes have been a concern for me on bentaleb for a long time now uh but uh it looks like that has smoothed out quite significantly so he is someone that you can consider i would definitely keep it for gpp though because outside of his goals he's usually getting only three to four fantasy points max uh as a ceiling so just not someone i'm looking for outside of like a gpp swing uh now in terms of cash and if you're absolutely looking for someone to play uh from uh Schalke, or if you fall with 5.4k and you're not necessarily comfortable using an offender uh you can definitely go go with kono Plyanka uh for only 5.4k uh he sh if he again uh, tough to know if he will absolutely get the start but i have no issue using Using him if you're looking to chase the higher salaries and uh, you want to take a little bit of a risk. Uh, if you guess the start, don't worry about him in cash. You can absolutely use him in GPP, a little bit more risk, but uh, I do really like uh, Kono Plyanka uh, for only uh, 5.4k. Now, upfront is really where I'm excited. This is where I'm looking to start my GPP this slate. I'm super jacked about this. I'm hoping that both Bergstaller and uh, Mbolo, uh, Bri and Bolo, get the start up front and people will jump on Bergstaller where they're actually supposed to be jumping on Bri and Bolo, one of the top GPP plays this slate. Now, the reason uh, he is such a good GPP play is because he doesn't really do that much outside of uh, his uh, potential goals, uh, especially against someone like City. Uh, but ideally here, the, the point with Brian Bolo is that he is a monster. He's a big body. He's capable. He scores goals. And he's been scoring goals against the world's biggest clubs for two straight seasons now in the Champions League. So I have absolutely no problem with Brian Bolo if he gets to start. He's on a hot streak at the moment. Uh, so do not sleep on this guy if he gets to start in GPP. I would even even make an argument for you to start your gpp cards with brian bolo as your forward take on uh schalke because like i said city really should be conceding because schalke will be attacking city been vulnerable to teams that attack them they may not lose but they've been vulnerable and brian bolo has literally every tool possible to help you take down from 4.6k and scoring a goal uh, so yeah, I really uh, like Schalke to score a goal, but outside of that, there isn't a whole lot to chase, especially uh, for cash. Uh, outside of uh, Salif Sané, probably my top play this uh, this slate for either format. 
So yeah, uh, let's jump over to Sydney now. They are up 3-2 with three away goals, so they're really in the driver's seat. Now a lot of this, uh, what I talked about earlier, we are kind of hoping for Schalke to go to quick goal, which will make it 3-3. And while uh, City will still be going ahead, uh, there will only be a goal away from uh, being put out, which again, it didn't take that long for uh, Schalke to score two on them. Uh, and honestly, the penalty shots were potential goals in the first place anyway. So this isn't a situation where we have to fear, or I should say that we, we should be targeting Ederson or a clean sheet, but you can. Uh, now, the fact is, is that City is City. They've won nine straight all competitions and they've won nine straight home games. Uh, now, they have only kept two... A clean sheets this Champions League uh, seven games. So I know a lot of people won't be jumping on Arison. I won't be jumping on him for cash. It's definitely a GPP play. Now to further that a little bit, one of the reasons is that he doesn't really have a lot of good stacking options at the back. Uh, I think uh, they're a little bit expensive for the lack of floor and upside the City wingbacks offer. And the city center backs are just plain too expensive. Laporte's going to be coming back from a hamstring injury. Company hasn't really played much this season despite being the team captain. So he'll be struggling for true fitness. Um, you can never really trust. Uh, where is he at? My main man. Um, Odomeni's out. Never mind. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. He's just going to, he's worth a card uh, basically every game. So, uh, yeah, a lot of my focus this site will obviously be on the Raheem Sterling, uh, Raheem Mahrez, and Leroy Sané. Sané hasn't played that much in 2019. So that is quite interesting to think about where uh, you may be looking at Ryan Mahrez as someone that you're going to want to rock and cash as much as possible this slate. Now, a lot of that has to do with the fact that A-City are a world-class team. They're probably going to win and their forwards are kind of untargetable uh the problem is that Aguero has been playing lots of 90 minute games or uh close enough to that and uh what's happening is that him and uh, Jesus have been subbing each other off now Jesus has been injured for a while slowly coming back to fitness really wouldn't surprise me to either see him get the start or come on as a sub City don't play in the English Premier League this weekend they play in uh the FA Cup against Swansea so uh they may just straight simple uh, go at Jesus for 90 minutes to save Aguero or vice versa split them split them or go Aguero Jesus it's just too hard to tell now thankfully we do get them on the first day here so uh, we may be looking at a situation again like I said if they concede right away they're really going to have to go for this and we could be looking at a 3-1 game uh, so I don't see City losing this by just or I, uh, yeah I don't see City losing this I also don't see them winning this by less than one goal, but I also don't see them getting a clean sheet. So uh, what that means to me is that 3-1-4-1 Man City final. Uh, but like I said, Schalke is still absolutely jam-packed with incredible play, starting with Salif Sané. Uh, you can go with Kono Planka if you're looking, uh, but uh, if uh, it looks like Mares is going to be getting the start, and uh, getting close to or enough of 90 minutes and set pieces, hunt the set pieces. Could be David Silva, but it's probably going to be Ryan Mahrez uh, for only 8.4K, which is a little bit of a steal this late, uh, but an excellent way to start. Your cash cards, 3-1, 4-1 Man City final. Next game on the slate, we have Atletico Madrid traveling to Juventus. So, like I mentioned earlier, Atletico is up 2-0 right now. Both home goals. They have won five straight games, all competitions. However, they have won only five of their previous 11 away games in all competitions. And that includes a really serious 4-0 uh, loss to Dortmund in the group stages, which we'll talk about here very quickly shortly. Uh, but uh, basically, the main point to take away from this is that uh, Atletico Madrid is not as good as an away team as they are at home, and they may not have scored enough goals at home. Uh, so, yeah, it, through, let's start with yeah, let's start with Atletico. The only real way they're coming out on top of this is if they keep Ronaldo and Juventus under one goal. So the the success script says O Block right away. 
But considering they are so bad away from home, he's going to carry a ton of ownership because people are going to see the 4.2K, the shots coming from Ronaldo, and the 2 nothing victory last late. So he is going to draw a ton of ownership and probably unnecessarily. So I'll be looking past All Black this slate despite having two of the better uh, wing back options and probably one of the better uh, wing back options in uh, Arias for only four point, for only 4K flat on DraftKings. Now I know he's going to be going up against a lot of uh, the best attackers in the world in Dybala and Ronaldo. But at the same time, uh, he's dirt cheap and he gets the majority of his defensive production through defensive uh, peripheral stats, unlike the crossers that you'll see at the 5K plus range. So if you're looking for someone that's going to get defense uh, stats, you can almost guarantee it's going to come against the likes of these Juventus wingers at Juventus. So yeah, I have no problem with uh, Santiago Arias for 4K, but Definitely keep him to cash. Now, if you are looking to play some GPP, uh, you can get away with some all black areas and Juan Fran because I don't even hate Juan Fran uh, for, from 4.4K. The only issue I have with him is that he's a crosser, and in order for him to cross, he's going to have to have an attacking game, which may not necessarily come against the likes of Juventus. Now, through a success script, uh, it comes through a clean sheet or... Uh, Again, lots of crossing from Atletico. That's where it would come from. So I don't hate the idea of a clean sheet chase of the three. It's definitely not my favorite stack by any means, but it's there. It's very viable, and you can get away with it the slate. Now, with the return of Koke into the lineup, that does make them a little bit more of a different team. Uh, they will be crossing the ball a lot more, giving uh, Juventus a little bit more defense work. Now, I'm not necessarily convinced that uh, they'll be able to cross as much as they would like. One of the issues here is that Koke and Griezmann now will be juggling set pieces between them, and it won't be uh, all Griezmann, though. Griezmann will get the high-potent set pieces. And uh, really, uh, that's uh, always don't play Lamar. Fade Lamar forever. Just don't play him in DFS. I said it. Just don't do it and you, you will not be disappointed. If you do it forever, you won't be disappointed. In the long run, you will win a lot. Uh, now, up front, really, it's Griezmann. 8.8K. He's too cheap. Plain and simple, just too cheap. Uh, does that necessarily mean he's a, a lock for cash? He's darn tootin' close to it. Uh, I prefer the Juventus side of things, but like I said, 8.8K, you really can't go wrong this slate. Uh, you won't be missing out too much. So, yeah, uh, the only way Atletico will succeed is keeping the ball of the net and crossing the ball a lot, which means guys like the wingbacks, Koke and Griezmann, all should find extreme success through a success script, which makes them a GPP team to me this slate. I think you can use Griezmann in cash because of his super uh, high floor and too low of a salary this slate, but in terms of where I look at the team, it's definitely a GPP script. Now jumping on to Juventus, Juventus are running away with the Italian league right now. Uh, they've won all but three of their home games in all competitions this season. They've won nine of their ten previous UCL Champions League home games. Excuse me, UCL Champions League home games. So um, they're like I said, this is a different situation now. They're, they're a much better home team than they are away. So we can kind of look at Juventus here to score at least two goals and potentially take this to extra time. Uh, they have all the tools to do so. And if I'm being absolutely frank, the athletic result last night was a bit of a surprise. So yes, uh, we can look for Juventus to go for this and have all the abilities to do so, especially when we consider how injured and unhealthy the Madrid, uh, backline and midfielders are. So yeah, uh, Chesney is not the place I would start. Basically, any slate, he's not very good, period. So I'm just not that interested. And with Sandro out and suspended this slate, uh, that is going to open up some really interesting value on the left wing. Now, Juventus play with three center backs, and both their uh, defenders play as a wing or more as wing midfielders than 
uh, true uh, defender. So with Sandro out, that should give Bernadeschi uh, a full 90 minutes on the left wing, which I really don't mind for 5.4K in a GPP scenario. And if Bentucor gets the start over Can, I do like that uh, for GPP as well. You may be able to get away with it for cash, uh, though his minutes have been a little bit more concerning as of late, but I really don't mind it. Now, uh, where I really do like uh, the, to go further from that is uh, basically uh, Pianic and uh, Pianic and GPP and uh, Diaba or Ronaldo in cash, pre preferably Ronaldo. Now, uh, Pianic and GPP for a couple reasons. Firstly, people are going to look at the O and say, see that he won't be playing, which he absolutely will be and he takes a lot of the further crosses and set pieces and long far away stuff where Ronaldo deals mostly with the close up and stuff and Diablo takes a lot of the corners now to further that a lot of the issues this season has been Bernadeschi and Diablo playing the exact same position, constantly battling over minutes with Bernadeschi now playing on the left wing for Sandro. We should be looking at a full 90 minutes for Diablo, which I really like. Uh, you can roll with some Manzuc Manzucic in uh, GPP if you like, though I think he's fairly unviable as a whole. I'd rather just spend up for uh, Ronaldo the slate for either format. 10K uh, at home. Much better player. Uh, looking at simple double digits, 10K is still too cheap. So yeah, I really don't mind Ronaldo the slate from 10K. Probably one of my favorite uh, overall plays as a whole, but I'll definitely be keeping him to uh, a lot of cash explode uh, cash exposure this slate. Uh, so yeah, uh, my prediction for this game is that it will finish two nothing Juventus, which will take it to overtime and it'll go all the way to penalty shootouts. Uh, once these teams, Juventus, once Juventus scores twice, once Juventus scores once, uh, Atletico will start defending even more. Uh, I don't see them coming out to attack at all, but they'll defend even more. And then once Juventus scores twice, both teams will set up shop and just defend and not look to make a mistake. Uh, so yeah, 2 nothing Juventus final, uh, and then goes to penalty shootouts. I can't see Juventus losing this. I, I do have them as my Champions League victors this season. So, yeah, I, I also can't see Chesney winning a penalty shootout, though. Uh, so, yeah, I will say uh, Juventus penalty shootout win, but uh, I definitely uh, would uh, prefer keeping 2-0 uh, as the cash script and the the penalty shots as the GPP. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's say a, a 2 nothing Juventus and then a 3-2 a, a aggregate Juventus penalty shot victory. Next game of the slate we have uh, an incredible, interesting, built-up, uh, what's the word, hyped-up game I'm looking. There we go. Uh, Lyon making the trip into uh, Spain to play Barcelona. So this finished 0-0 at home uh, for Lyon first time around. Now, they have, if anything, been looking at this game since forever. They they haven't really been doing very well as of late. They've only won three of their seven uh, previous games, all competitions, losing two of the seven. And they're, uh, of those four games that they did not win of the previous seven, three of those four came away from home. Now, they've scored in 14 of their 16 away games in all competitions this season, and they've scored in six of their seven Champions League games so far this season. Uh, so this is a team, much like Schalke, they're well under it, but they're probably going to score a goal doing so, which opens up uh, a couple doors for us to consider. Now, Lopez has been disastrous for him for uh, Lyon, so I'm not looking at him. And furthermore, I'm looking at him to give up a couple weak ones and Barcelona to score upwards of three to five goals this game. Uh, now, to further that, a lot of that's going to come through Mendy and just uh, him being absolutely over his head. Uh, the poor guy, he, he he tries hard enough. He's just like, he was uh, giving the ball away for free last game like it was his job. So I'm looking uh, to target him a lot this slate. Now, a lot of the issues around Lyon for me is uh, Fekker and Depay both being healthy at the exact same time. So basically, when Fecker's out, uh, Depay is the simplest cash lock of the entire slate. No problem. You don't even have to consider it. But when they're 
both in there together, they cancel each other out and neither really get enough done. And Fekker falls into a GPP range, which he isn't even really viable for because the ceiling isn't that true against a team like Barcelona, who are truly dominant. So, yeah, it's it's really tough to pick between either of those this slate. And I'll probably fade the pair of them and let people jump onto that. And where I'll be focusing is on uh, Moussa Dembele up front uh, for only 5K. Uh, again, kind of like Schalke, I think Barcelona are going to concede. Uh, they do, much like Man City, have the ability just to, to shut out the other team because they're winning 4 nothing or whatever. But at the same time, Dembele is coming in on in incredible form, has some history with Barcelona. Do not sleep on Dembele if he gets the start for uh, Lyon. I do like him up front for only 5K. Uh, but that is really as far as I would stretch my GPP. Uh, I do like the idea of Dembele and uh, 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 Brie and Bolo as uh, two GPP forwards and trying to catch two uh, sleepers because while they may score at the same time, that's going to destroy a lot of clean sheet chases. So, yeah, uh, very valuable goals, very valuable goals. Uh, I probably wouldn't take both. That's risky, a little bit too risky, but one or the other or maybe uh, fluctuate one or switch one or the other in uh, with someone who I'm going to talk about here in the final game, who I think is the GPP gem of this slate. Uh, now, Barcelona, uh, where to look at here? There's, They could go out. They could win 5 nothing. Uh, I don't really see them winning one nothing or a boring game. Uh, they've lost only one of their previous 12 games in all competition winning seven of those 12 and they've won nine of their 12 uh, previous home games in all competitions and they haven't lost at home since november uh they have however conceded in five of their six previous home games in all competitions and they've conceded in four of their seven champions league games this season so we can't assume that they are going to concede at some point here uh, unless Lyon isn't scoring. But with Fekker and Depay both playing, Lyon is a better team, albeit a worse DFS team. So we can't expect the goal, which makes me drop more towards Dembele. Now, if you are going to go the other side, Ter Stegen is a GPP swing. You can definitely go there. He does have excellent uh, wing back options, whoever you want to roll with. You can either go one in, in one in cash, take both in GPP, take one in GPP, take all three of them in GPP. I mean, uh, Ter Stegen with uh, two wing backs. Uh, whatever works, it's all viable. But mainly this slate, I'm going to be looking at taking uh, Messi and Ronaldo together in my cash card again. And, uh, and namely for this for this team, uh, I'm going to be going Messi Cash, Coutinho GPP. Uh, with uh, Dembele looking like he won't be healthy enough to play, Coutinho should be looking at 90 minutes from 7.9K at home against the French side in Lyon, who really isn't in the same ballpark as Barcelona. I think Coutinho makes an incredible amount of sense as a GPP flyer, an excellent little pivot. Uh, you can stack him and Messi together. I really don't even mind that uh, because you're not even ruining yourself here whenever we start talking about defenders and center backs further. So, uh, for Barcelona, I do think they will win this something obscene like 4 or 5 nothing. And Messi will have uh, an incredible outing because he's making a statement right now that he is a much better player than Ronaldo. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this is risky. This is a really risky game. The longer this goes, the worse it's going to get for Barcelona. That's for sure. So, uh, as a fan, I'm cheering for some Lyon maybe to take this to overtime and 0-0 or maybe sneak a really late away goal. That's the big thing here is that Barcelona didn't get an away goal last game. So if this finishes 1-1, Lyon advances. So if Lyon scores, Barcelona needs two goals minimum or they're out. They're done. And I can't imagine a happier scenario for me than Lionel Messi not making to the next stage of the Champions League. So uh, I will say at least a 3 nothing Barcelona win. They will win by uh, exact same situation as City. I think they're going to concede, but they're going to win by at least two goals. So we'll say a 3-1, 4-1 Barcelona win. Uh, don't shy away from uh, Messi, Cash, Coutinho, GPP. 
Final game of the slate. We have Liverpool making the trip to Bayern to play Bayern Munich. This is hilarious. This is going to be so much fun. Uh, basically, everyone's going to own Liverpool because it's Liverpool and they're Liverpool. And who doesn't like Liverpool? And it's Liverpool and Liverpool. And what? They're out? They're going to be out? They're going to lose this game and be out? That's what you're telling me? That's what I'm telling you right now. Liverpool are going to be out after Wednesday. It's going to be awesome because they're going to draw double-digit ownerships across the board. And we're going to be able to really... A lot of people are going to be ruined after the first day. Uh, because, first of all, they're going to be taking Liverpool, which is the incorrect it's decision. And second of all, that's going to run you down a script road that is going to be an incorrect card from day one you're probably going to be done so yeah let, let's jump right into this like i said zero zero drop first slate no away goals kind of lends again to the situation earlier if uh liverpool score byron need two which isn't that big of an ask so we'll get there in a second so yeah liverpool has actually won only five of their previous 12 games all competitions they've won only one of their previous six away games all competitions and they lost all of their group stages in this year's champions league to napoli red star and psg and they actually haven't won a champions league away game in almost a full calendar year so this is a situation here where liverpool Liverpool is an absolute disaster away from home. And a lot of people aren't really necessarily tuned into that, whether they're homers, they like the EPL, or they just like playing DFS and they know Salah's really good, or Mane's been scoring two goals a lot recently, and they're just going to jump all over these guys. And I think that's a huge mistake. Now, are there, su are there success scripts for Liverpool? Yes, absolutely. Um... Allison will need to stand on his head if they are going to uh, go through, uh, namely to the tune of a clean sheet and minimum four saves. Trent Alexander-Arnold at 5.4K is always a lot of fun, but I prefer taking uh, Andrew Robertson at only 4.2K. He was named the captain of Scotland very recently. 4.2K is just too cheap for someone of his skill set. Uh, you can even rock him in GPP, rock all three, him, TAA, and uh, Chase with Allison as well, uh, whatever you feel. But I really like uh, Alexander Arnold this slate from only 4.2K. I think makes a lot of sense. Uh, probably as a flyer in GPP, but you could swing him in cash. Uh, the midfields, though, this is this is really tough for me, but I'll, I'll be fading a lot of these midfielders across the board. Uh, I think Saul is going to draw 20% min ownership uh, and won't score a goal. Mane is going to draw even more than that because he's been scoring so much domestically as of late and people won't notice that he's been borderline disastrous away from home and he's been strictly in a home performer. Uh, so uh, Firmino... Not the worst play of the bunch, but again, when you're looking at Firmino as one of the better options, that isn't really ideal. Now, can Salah score from 8.2K? Yes. GPP? Yes. But his ownership's going to be so high, there's just so much more reason not to do it on the other side, which I'll talk about here in a second. And uh, to further that, there's so many different guys that could be playing here. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm just not that interested in Liverpool away because they have so much stacked against them and have so much recent and uh, modern day history of them away from home being really, really bad. So, yeah. Uh, that's my that's my Liverpool spew. Uh, I think a lot of people are going to own them incorrectly, and it's going to allow you to uh, not only take Byron players to be different, but take Byron players just uh, to immediately by default get paid. Uh, so yeah, uh, across the board, uh, newer you can take in either format. Liverpool away is really bad. Byron's really good at home. Uh, so yeah, it, what what do you want to do with that? Uh, they're tied with the in first in the Bundesliga right now. Uh, they major comeback against Dortmund. They've won six of their seven previous games, all competitions. They've won seven straight home games, at all competitions. And the big ones, they've won 20. They've won. They've outright won 22 of their previous 26 Champions League home games. And they haven't lost at home uh, at, since October. So, uh, yeah, this is uh, kind of a mix between uh, Barcelona and uh 
having a better matchup as Liverpool is going to have more ownership and just be worse away from home. Now, Lewandowski is an absolute fiend at the moment. I'll talk about him in a second too, but he's definitely somebody you're going to want this slate. So yeah, with uh, newer, get him into your cards, cash GPP, chase the GPP uh, clean sheet because not many people are going to be on it. With both wingbacks out, uh, we could be looking at Alan Cantrag, uh, uh, Alcantrada getting the start at wingback. I don't mind him for cash at only 5.1K. I think he makes a whole lot of sense. Even more so, another lock this slate that you're absolutely 100% you're going to step one. Uh, take Salif Sané. Step two, you're going to take uh, Javi Martinez for only 3.9K. Uh, either format, don't worry about it. He's just as capable to get three times the uh, salary as he is to pay off in cash. Uh, does he have risk? Obviously, but uh, I have no issue, especially in FanDuel. Get ha- uh, Javi Martinez into your cards uh, for only 3.9K. Uh, to further that, uh, I think uh, taking both him and James Rodriguez together in your cash cards makes all the sense this slate. Uh, Rodriguez showed why last slate, and he's going to see even more exclusive minutes and uh, set pieces rights this slate. So I expect an even better showing at home than 10.5K, and preferably I'm hoping to see a little bit of ceiling show up from the slate in cash. So you're going to want, ideally this slate, a uh, minimum of three Byron players in your cash just because they offer so much value, specifically newer Rodriguez and Javi Martinez. Uh, so yeah, I think this uh, this type of card right here, this slate, mixed in with another 4K-ish defender makes all the sense in the world. Uh, you'll really set yourself up to take down. Uh, even if you drop into a GPP, it has all the ceiling uh, that you could possibly want to. Uh, so yeah, uh, mainly uh, the way I'm looking at this is that my core is Messi, Ronaldo, James Rodriguez. To fix that up, uh, to further that a little bit, excuse me, if you want to go a little bit GPP about this, uh, you can drop uh, Ronaldo, uh, keep James, and uh, go uh, James Rodriguez, and go a full Byron stack with Lewandowski. And I think that makes crazy amount of sense. Lewandowski has 23 goals in his la- in his excuse me in his previous 22 Champions League games. Uh, that uh, I should say. 23 22 home champions league games and uh, this includes uh none in his previous 10 appearances in the knockout stages so he's a big game player he's probably going to score two if not three goals this slate so i think lewandowski is i don't think lewandowski is my top gpp play this slate no doubt no question get him into your cards uh i cash i would prefer just sticking the rodriguez martinez newer side but gpp go a step further if you even want to uh you're really pushing it but uh yeah you can drop out james and then uh pour in some ronaldo as well and chase that real high ceiling I would take Messi over Ronaldo the slate. Oh, there I said it. I said it. I would take Messi over Ronaldo for cash. Uh, so, namely for cash, like I said, my core is Ronaldo, Messi, James, Martinez, Salif Sane, and newer in Nets. For GPP, I really like guys like uh, dropping down in the forwards like uh, Bree and Bolo on Schalke. Dembele on Lyon and uh, you know going from there and that kind of a start there uh, because you can still get all sorts of the real big guys game stacking uh, if you are taking okay here's another here's another to further it a little bit uh, to further uh, these two because I was talking with them earlier if you're going to take Mbolo and you don't feel like you are owned or you're still feeling like you're dealing with too much ownership in your gpp card game stack get some city in there with embolo and chase both teams scoring if you're ta- chasing uh some uh, dembele on Lyon and you feel like you have a little bit too much ownership in your gpp card get messi in there or a uh, messi and coutinho and game stack this game 
uh, and just take that GPP stack a little bit further. So instead of doing something that doesn't really correlate, uh, you know, correlate a little bit, uh, chase that game stack. So I don't mind that as well uh, if you're doing some GPP. But yeah, that is uh, really my slate here. I'm going to say final score. Bayern Munich is going to score early and often and uh, win upwards of 3-0. Liverpool could reply to make it half interesting, but I think Bayern's just going to be way too good at home and score more than two goals. So uh, in terms of ceiling, Bayern, big ceiling. I think Barcelona has big ceiling. Juventus has big ceiling. And uh, Man City as well. All the home teams this late, I think, have excellent ceilings. So, yeah, uh, Bayern Munich, uh, 3 nothing final score. Thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. This was the knockout uh, second leg uh, breakdown for March 12th and 13th. Rotopros.com. Get over it. Check us out. Articles. Drop it down. You'll see all of our free content. Sign up. Get involved in our community. We have an excellent Slack on the go, a Slack chat that we use. And uh, get me at uh, Twitter, uh, Rad Rob Diamond. Check me out on all the message boards and follow me on the competitions, specifically uh, the big ones, the King of the Pitch. I'm always shooting for King of the Pitch. I'm desperate to get there. I've been going for it. Uh, basically, that's my uh, my dream uh, for DFS is to get into the King of the Pitch. So, yeah, uh, make sure to keep track there. But, yeah, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. Best of luck this late. Hopefully, as usual, see you at the top. And uh, much love.